Yo, 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 honors biology, we're doing macromolecules with Thug Nick D for what is science part three. So, we're talking about macromolecules. Big, huge molecules for essential for life. So, we got carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids, and the elements we need is carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. So starting with carbohydrates, what's the function? We've got storage of energy that provides and shapes of organisms. Building blocks are, ma are monosaccharides, means one saccharide or one sugar. In the real world, we've got glycogen, which is storage for living animals. We use glycogen. In plants, they use cellulose. It makes up our pencils and papers and desks that you sit in. So next we got some chitin. Chitin is going to be the exoskeleton of insects. It's what you hear when you step on them and they go crunch. So when we look over here, we got a cicada coming out and molten. It's going to be leaving its exoskeleton on the tree, on the bark. I call them crunchy bugs. They're awesome. Now when we talk about sugars, we're going to be talking about food sometimes too. We got monosaccharides which are easily broken down. They're going to be quick energy such as candy bars. Then we got disaccharides. Well, di means two. That's the combo of two sugars. Then we got polysaccharides. Poly means many. Combo of monomer and disaccharides is going to be a polysaccharide. So we got sugar, starch, cellulose, glycogen. I'm kind of hungry now. Next, we talk about structures. Simple sugar is going to be monosaccharide, one saccharide, one sugar. Double sugars or disaccharide, two sugars. Then we got starches, which are going to be polysaccharide. Poly meaning many, saccharide meaning sugars, many sugars. So, breaking it down, monosaccharide, disaccharide, polysaccharide. Monosaccharides are our building blocks. We've got glucose, which is in candy and simple sugar. We've got fructose, which is in fruit. Mm. Then we've got ribose, which is in DNA and RNA. Then we've got our disaccharides, which is formed from two monosaccharides. So, the first one you know is going to be sucrose, which is glucose and fructose, and that is your table sugar. Then we've got lactose, which is glucose, and galactose, which is milk sugar. Then we have our polysaccharides, three or more monosaccharides coming together, and that forms glycogen in us, animal, storage of carbohydrates, and cellulose in plants. So, if you didn't notice, os, 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 and os, things ending in os are going to be sugars. So, moving on to protein, we got structure, hormone regulators, immune system antibodies, oxygen transport, and enzymes. Enzymes break things down, such as amylase. It's in the mouth, helps break things down. Next, we have lactase, helps break down lactose. And we have lipase, breaks down lipids. Now, if you realize here, ACE, ACE, and ACE, things ending in ACE are going to be enzymes, breaking down the first front of the word. So, Lactase breaks down lactose. If I made up zebraase, then that would break down zebras. Get it? Good. Then, structures. Always contain carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. We've got amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein. There are about 20 of them. And they are connected with a peptide bond, which is a covalent bond that connects the amino acids chain together in a dehydration synthesis reaction. What is that? Very simple. Dehydration is talking about the parts of water and synthesis is going to create water. So when we bring these amino acids together, we pull pieces off that form water. So when we combine, we form water. Four basic structures. We've got primary protein structure, which is just going to be the amino acids connecting together. It's the chain. Then, the chain can do some funky things. It can do a beta pleated sheet, which means it folds in on itself. 
then or it can do an alpha helix, which is going to be a helical structure. Now, when these combine, we're going to have a tertiary structure. Now, when tertiary structures, multiple proteins, combine together, that's when we get a quaternary structure. Those are the structures. So then we've got our structural proteins that make us who we are. So we've got our hair, which is keratin. Fingernails are keratin. Skin is collagen that lets it stretch. Muscles have myosin. Cartilage is interesting. It's got a glycoprotein. Now what is that? It's a combo of proteins and carbohydrates. Those sugars that we sh that I showed you earlier. The combo of them. Then we've got our ligaments, which are collagen plus a glycoprotein. And then we've got our eyes and our cornea, that is collagen and keratin combined. So then we talk about lipids. Lipids are for long-term storage, not like sugars. Sugars are quick energy. Now, lipids, long-term. These include fats, oils, steroids, and waxes. Now, we'll see fatty acids throughout all of these. Fatty acids are basically big, long chains of carbon. It comes in two forms. Saturated fatty acids, which are carbon chains with no double bonds. Right here. This top one here and this top one here. No double bonds in the carbon chain. Therefore, it keeps it straight. You can remember this because if you take a towel and you saturate it with water, putting water on it, it's just going to hang straight. Now, unsaturated fats have double bonds in the carbon chain, which makes it kink. So, here we see a kink right here. That must be a double bond. Here we see a double bond, which creates a kink, and another kink, and another kink, and another kink. So, unsaturated fats are going to be kinked, not straight. So we have phospholipids, which is our first type of lipid. It composes the cell membrane. It also composes our organelle, some of our organelle membranes. And it's composed of a hydrophilic polar head and a hydrophobic nonpolar fatty acid. So again, it has a polar head, which is phosphorus polar head. And then it's got two chains of fatty acids. So when we actually create our phospholipid bilayer, meaning we have two layers of these things, we're going to have our heads on the outside and our tails on the inside. The waters can touch heads, but they can't touch the tail. So, water's here and water's down below, but it can't go through, creating an awesome barrier. Next, we've got triglycerides. It's got glycerol and fatty acids. Can you guess how many fatty acids? with triglycerides, we've got it, three. So again, here's our glycerol, and then we've got our three fatty acid chains. They're stored in adipose tissue of animals, so in our fat, and they actually hold and provide more energy than proteins and carbohydrates. They just take a bit longer to actually use. So then we have the steroids which is going to be cholesterol, which regulates the sodium in the blood level and the sex hormone. Cholesterol is right here. And then we have like anabolic steroids, such as like testosterone. Then we've got to check out our DNA is our last type of macromolecule. It is our chemical makeup of the body. It controls everything in the cell and carries our genetic code. This guy makes us who we are. Then we've got RNA, which is made from DNA, and it creates protein. So, building blocks of DNA and RNA are going to be nucleotides. And nucleotides have three pieces. We have a phosphorus, we have a sugar, and we have a base. Now, the sugar differs if it's a DNA versus an RNA. In DNA, we have deoxyribose sugar. And then in RNA, we have ribose sugar. Now in the bases, in DNA, we have four bases in DNA. Adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Now in RNA, we add uracil in there as well. But these nucleotides form one side of a helix and then the other side of the helix, creating a double helix for our DNA. And that's all I got. So peace out.